Gus, John Black, Super Chemist. Here I unbox my new Cornelius keg, but I'm going to use it as a hydrogen bomb. I already got it opened already, so I wasn't here for an hour cutting it. That's used. Uh, my buddy said, come out of the shoot with an unboxing video and show the product, so that's what I'm going to do. Here it is. It's stainless steel, you can see. Um, it's just basically a vessel. It's an empty vessel, right? And you can see on top here, it has these quick disconnects. Um, where you, oh wait, where you kind of go like that and you can put them on real easy. Uh, and you can see how it has the, see there you can connect stuff on it. It got the barbed, whatever, it got an in. And the black here is the out. It even labels it. Um, has a lid on it. Um, pressure relief valve. You can see right here. So if it builds up too much pressure. And it says on this top and on the bottom on the side here. Uh, that it takes up to 130 PSI. I don't know what the pressure relief valve is rated at. Probably 130 or 140 maybe even. Uh, maybe 135. I don't know. It's usually rated a little little bit higher than what the, the canister is rated for. But not much higher. Um, basically, uh, this is used. It's called a Cornelius. Uh, and you can take this. You can see it has a lid. lid has a um, gasket on it. You know what I mean? And I don't know if you can see inside. There's nothing really in there. You can see that pipe. That pipe leads up to the um, out inlet. Okay. Let me put this back on here. You press down on it. There you go. To lock that up. <coughs> And uh, what this is made for, it's a Cornelius uh, keg, okay? And what you do, you put anything you want to carbonate, like pop, beer, uh, champagne, anything you want carbonated. You put the liquid inside here, and you have your inlet, and you put, uh, you have a tank of carbon dioxide, and you put this carbon dioxide in the inlet, and it will force it in. That's how you carbonate your beverage. <coughs> Uh, I'm guessing you leave it for so long or whatever, and the out, because of all the pressure, if you, you, uh, open up the out, you have that tube going down to the bottom, and it'll suck all the liquid from the bottom, right? Suck it all out of here so you can, you know, direct it to wherever you want the beer or pop or whatever you're making. So this is not rated for what I'm going to use it for. This is not actually a hydrogen, well it is a hydrogen bomb, but it's not made for it, you know what I mean? Uh, so I don't suggest anyone use it for, you know, it's not intended for this, but I'm going to. Uh, the reason why they call this a hydrogen bomb, and that is the technical chemistry term, hydrogen bomb, uh, is because I guess a lot of people blew up doing this. Uh, uh, but a hydrogen bomb basically means you're going to get some hydrogen and put it under pressure to do some type of reaction. Um, why is it called a hydrogen bomb? Like I said, because if you get any kind of leak and it hits any kind of spark, any kind of static electricity, any kind of uh, fire, you know, any kind of heat that's too much, you're going to blow up. Especially something this large. Uh, if you... If this blows up, boy, you're going to blow up your whole house, man. You'll at least blow up a room, uh, definitely a room. And if it takes out any walls that are, uh, you know, uh, load-bearing walls, you might take down, you know, half a house with just this filled with hydrogen. You get a leak and it blows up. Now, a secondary explosion will come and knock this off of your hydrogen tank. If you have a big hydrogen tank or you have a, even a small hydrogen tank that's filled up all the way, this secondary explosion could take out your whole house and adjacent houses, houses next to your house. So this is no joke. You know, I don't recommend anyone do it. 
It's not an instructional video. It's just a video showing you what I'm doing. It's a vlog of my chemistry learning experiences. Uh, instead of carbon dioxide, I'm going to use uh, hydrogen, right? And some things, you can see it has plastic on it, and on the bottom it has plastic. Um, so you can't really heat it up. I mean, this one I got, uh, like, off the street or whatever. So, I mean, they do have them where there's no plastic. You can buy them with no plastic. And sooner or later, I'll get one with no plastic so I can heat this. Um, I'm thinking I can heat this, you know, maybe with water. So, I mean, maybe up to 90 degrees Celsius. I don't think I'd want to go any higher than that. Um, you know, I don't want to ruin it. Uh, but there's a lot of... Uh, hydrogenolysis and hydrogenation that you can do without a lot of heat. Uh, I means, uh, double bonds, triple bonds, um, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that only needs, you know, a couple atmospheres of pressure and you can do it at room temperature or just heat it up slightly. Um, one of the ones that I want it for, and you know, I want it to do all those other things too, double bonds and blah blah blah. Uh, but I think a lot of people are interested in this one is because because of these four things right here. These are hard to get. They don't really put them in products. They used to put toluene in products, but they don't anymore. Uh, and once you have one of these, you have all four of them because they're so easy to, you know, interchange. You know. The, make if you have benzaldehyde, and you can easily make it into benzyl alcohol you can easily make it into that you can easily make it into the toluene you know what i mean it's no big deal then <clears throat> if you notice on videos on youtube they always when they make one of these products they always start with one of these products because they know you can't a regular home chemist can't really get any of them um so it's not a very helpful videos you know what i mean in my mind um and don't get me wrong I'm, one of my videos i'm going to make this just to prove my blue light theory that you don't need UV to do free radical halogenation uh, at a benzyl position. Um, but, uh, you know, unless you can have the toluene, you can't do the experiment. So, anyways, first of all, what's the difference between hydrogenolysis and hydrogenation? Uh, hydrogenolysis you're breaking bonds, okay? You got to break a single bond and then you're going to add some hydrogen, right? Hydrogenation, you're not breaking any bonds. You're just adding H2 onto, say, a double bond or a triple bond. You're not breaking anything, okay? Um, and they will add sin because they'll add the same time. You usually you use a metal as a catalyst. Same up here, you're going to use some kind of catalyst. Uh, in my example here, I'm using copper chromate because this is the experiment I want to do um, because you can get this ester from methanol and benzoic acid. Benzoic acid is a uh, food preservative, so I mean it's no big deal to get. Methanol is gas line antifreeze. It comes pure in a bottle. You don't even have to, you know, distill it or anything. And you can make this product here um, with a little bit of sulfuric acid as a catalyst. H2, anyone can get that at a welding supply uh, store, you know, where you get acetylene and welding supply uh, accessories and stuff like that. And my and the copper chromite is easy to make also. Uh, Doug's video actually does a video on that. Um, you, only, you don't need a lot of it. Um, and I'm going to put them into the Cornelius keg here, right? And I have my in and my out. I'm gonna put up, you know, all the safety features and stuff you need. You know, check valves and pressure regulators, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the only thing I really need is I need some way to shake this. This thing needs shaking, or I need to put a stir. I don't think I can put a stir stir plate on it. If I can, that would be nice. I don't think it'll be enough though. Um, I think I would need some kind of manual, you know, some kind of machine or something moving this back and forth or up and down or something to agitate it to get the product up inside, you know, because the hydrogen's main thing is going to be at the surface 
air, you know, surface area of the liquid and the, and the uh, gas. So I'm going to shake it around a lot. But it goes up to 130 PSI. Even though that looks like 180, it's really 120 PSI. I figure 60 degrees Celsius. That way I don't melt the plastic, but I can still heat it up a bit. And maybe I'll do it for a day or two. You know, maybe start out with 48 hours, see what happens. You know, does it make any alcohol or does it not? You know what I mean? I mean, I know it does, but does it do it at 120 PSI and 60 C in that amount of time? You know what I mean? Or do I need more pressure? Do I need more time? Do I need, what do I need? Is it making any, you know, small percentage at least? You know, what's it doing? Well, we'll find out. But this is actually cheaper because you can get one of these used for 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Uh, you can get uh, a brand new one. It's Cornelius keg uh, for carbonating drinks. Uh, you can get a brand new one for like 75 bucks probably. Um, I'm just guessing. This makes a lot of other things. You can make uh, methylamine from it. Uh, from and I did a video on, I don't know if I did it on this channel, but on how to get nitromethane uh, from uh, RC cars, radio-controlled radio cars and planes that use actual liquid fuel instead of electricity. Uh, that's what their thing is. It's methanol and nitromethane with a little bit of castor oil in there. You can easily distill out the azeotrope. Uh, the methanol and nitromethane, and then once that comes out, if you're using a Vigorex column, it'll swoop up, you know, you'll see the difference in temperature at the steel head. You start distilling out the uh, nitromethane, you know what I mean? But you can leave the nitro, you can leave the methanol in when you do a hydrogenation of it. Uh, but I'm sure you need a lot of uh, pressure and stuff like that, temperature, to do this. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It definitely works, though. Um, so that way you don't need formaldehyde to make uh, methylamine. You just need the uh, RC fuel that anyone can buy. And the methanol that's in it is no big deal, really. And hydrogen from, you know, uh, welding the supply store and your... your uh, probably use platinum, palladium, uh, rainy nickel, or, or Russia bar, Russia bar nickel. That's, that's what I'm going to use, Russia bar nickel. And uh, Chem Player does a video on how to make that. Uh, rainy nickel is easy to make too. I don't think anyone did a video on it though. Maybe I'll do one. And uh, you can have on, you know, methylamine from you know, you don't have to mess around getting formaldehyde. I mean, anyone can get formaldehyde, though. I mean, they sell it at the photo photo place. You know what I mean? If you develop pictures as a hobby, uh, you know, and you have your own dark room and that, you'd buy little bottles of formaldehyde. It's paraphernaldehyde, but it's the same thing. Uh, and it's pure as heck, you know what I mean? <clears throat> uh, but this way you can make it, and it also makes other things uh, like... A lot of people know from making crystal meth or whatever, you can use uh, mercuric chloride to reduce an imine into a into the uh, the amine that you want. Um, well, you can just use this to reduce an imine. Uh, maybe put it at three thirty psi, maybe ten hours or something, and uh, you know some hydrogen in there with a little bit of catalyst, and uh, you know it'll do the same thing. You'll have the same product when you're done. <clears throat> there will be many things you can do with this stuff. I actually made blueprints to make this. I was going to get a stainless steel pipe, about a gallon, because it's like twice as big as I want it to be, really. But, you know, eighth of an inch thick or something, and get a cap and a, a top, and I, get, I was going to get someone to weld them together, stainless steel. Anyways, I'm definitely running out of time now. So you all have a great day and always remember science is great.